What's Fleetwood My Max? I'm Robert Evans, and this is Behind the Bastards, a podcast where we talk about the album Rumors, which was written by a bunch of people who, when they were making it, were all bastards to one another. Uh, oh, yeah. With, yeah. Me, with me today to talk about <laughs> Rumors is uh, Cody Johnston and Katie Stoll. How are we doing today, everybody? So good. So mm-hmm. thrilled to be here to talk mm-hmm. about Rumors with you. You know what I always think about? Hmm. I always think about how hard it must have been to be Christy McVie. You oh, know, God, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> you got mm. Stevie Nicks there. What do you, you do? Chris, Chris, she was wonderful. R.I.P. Uh huh. Absolutely wonderful. She got a little outshone, shined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, outshun. It's hard. Outshun. It's hard to. It's hard to be up against that. You know, I'm sure she was aware of it, and I think that. I think that that bleeds through. That's part of the part of the feel that. Um, um, you know that uh that that the album has, but yeah, yeah more so importantly, bees. who's favorite song on Rumors? Uh, favorite song. What 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 do we got? Is, is everyone just gonna say the chain? I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, say the chain, the chain too. I was like, it's just too hard to not. Well, say there's the also chain. something uh, great about. Uh, I was talking about this over the weekend. Just like <laughs> uh, Fleetwood Mac in general, they're an amazing band because like you'll hear a song and you'll not know that it's necessarily Fleetwood Mac because they've mm-hmm. got such a wide range, yeah. of sound and vocalists. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I was gonna say the chain. <laughs> have, so, have, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's hard, but there's a lot. Yes, it's the chain. Are you talking? I also like like go your own way. (laughs) Yeah, jam. Are you talking? Absolutely. A side woman, old A side and B side. Are we talking? Gold dust woman. Mm. Like there's yeah A and B. Why would why would you split them up? Yeah. Mm. All right. Dreams. I'm sorry. There's so many. Oh, dreams. (laughs) Silver. Silver Springs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Secondhand news, I think, would be mine oh. after uh, after the chain. That's just such a fucking banger. You're right. There's secondhand yeah. news. Oh, my God. What a great album. What an incredible album. album. Should we it's, start playing it speaking, now? Speaking. Yeah, yeah. Secondhand <laughs> news. <laughs> just listen to, uh, to rumors and think about how all of the lives lost in the cocaine industry were worth it. Um, yeah. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> no, no uh, we should probably get on. This is, uh, you know, we a uh, podcast you know what you know what the business is right we've been doing this for five years you guys have been on dozens of times probably um yeah. now we're doing a little bit of a different thing this year we we have another court case to go over the last time i had y'all both on we talked about the big lawsuit against fox news and we went through the legal filing that dominion's lawyers had against that after all the discovery today we are reading through a legal complaint from wolfram arnold eric Frozy. Tracy Hawkins, Joseph Killian, Laura Chan, Pite Lars, and Andrew Schlakescher. Man, why did all of you have complicated names to say? Mm. <laughs> um, un- unbelievable. So Pretty these guys are thoughtless, all honestly. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm against them already. Oh wait, no, they're suing Elon Musk, so I'm back on their side. Oh. So. Each of these people are former longtime employees of uh, of Twitter. Um, and I'm very frustrated by this legal document from the start because the first sentence of the introduction reads, plaintiffs are each longtime former employees of Twitter. And then in uh, parentheses, colloquially and hereafter referred to as tweeps. Hate it. <laughs> Wait, so they're the tweets? <laughs> they're the no, tweeps. No, tweeps. tweeps. Oh, tweeps. They're, oh, they're choosing no! to be referred to as yeah. tweeps. That like, is too twee. That's too twee. Twee. Yeah, it's way yeah. too twee. What is going on with you? Is it is it that like they legitimately had so much pride in old Twitter that they had to do this because it's a bad decision? Like legally, did they, I'm legally. Are they the yeah, ones? Not, yeah. Did the did the tweeps decide to call themselves the tweeps? I can't or, imagine their lawyer what? insisted on it. <laughs> right. Depends. On the yeah, lawyer. that was a big part yeah. of the culture, right? That's there was it was that term yeah. like, was used to talk about them, and it was on mm-hmm. all their little merch and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we're talking in the law. Maybe you don't need to do that. Yeah. Maybe you could. Yeah. The, the alley. Maybe you want to be taken seriously. Just like, yeah. Yeah. They could have. Horrible. I mean, Twits is right there, but I Twits guess. Twits is right there. 
on connotation. The twarps. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, these these people uh, who the, the lawsuit informs us have more than 60 years of collective experience working for the company were all either fired or constructively discharged uh, by Twitter right after <laughs> Musk took over. Um, some of these guys were pretty senior. Uh, there was a vice president in there. There's a global lead in there uh, when they, they got shit canned. Uh, quote, and due to that seniority, some of them were in the room where it happened after Musk's takeover of Twitter privy to and participants in high-level discussions and deliberations among Twitter's new leadership after the merger. Led by Musk and the cadres of sycophants who were internally referred to as the transition team, Twitter's new leadership deliberately, specifically, and repeatedly announced their intentions to breach contracts, violate laws, and otherwise ignore their legal obligations. And they put those words into action. Plaintiff Killiam was forced to resign from Twitter after being repeatedly and specifically directed to violate California's building codes in ways that potentially put tweet lives at risk. See, you, if you say it like that, you're making a very serious allegation, and I, I, I'm, I can't take it seriously. When say you frame people's it lives. I just, yeah, people's people's lives. Human lives. Because I was immediately like, tweet? Oh, yeah, no. Because like, also, I'm going to be honest, guys, I'm okay with tweets dying. You know, I'm not okay with people dying, but tweets? But tweets That's some other thing. It. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when they say the phrase, they were in the room where it happened, is that in italics? Uh, no, it's in quotation marks. I think it's a reference to that book by that Trump staffer in the room where it happened. I think it also, knowing the content and the context and the fact that they're calling someone's tweeps, I think yeah. that it also might be a Hamilton reference. Oh my God. Are oh, you kidding me? There's a song oh, I haven't called seen or heard Hamilton. Happens in, yeah. I'm pretty oh yeah, sure there is from you, Hamilton Cody, and a white house. Did you watch mi- Hamilton? Uh, yeah, it was on one of those streamers and I watched the, uh, I watched it. I Christ. thought you couldn't stomach it because of Lin-Manuel. I, I couldn't. I've got a corny. lot of thoughts on it. Oh my God. So he's really corny and I think he's shouldn't have been the guy in the, in the, the, in the show. But oh yeah. Put yourself the room, as the, the lead. Right yes. show, put yourself as can't, the lead. Can't sing, shouldn't be there, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. The, the room where it happened is the White House memoir of John Bolton, former national security advisor. <laughs> so Bro. they're either making sure a Hamilton or a John Bolton reference. <laughs> either way, I'm not happy. They're calling themselves it's tweets. It's definitely yeah. a it's Hamilton like, reference. Guys, like, yeah. There's guys. no question. Mm-hmm. Guys and girls, everyone. Guys tweeps. and dolls. Do you mm. want us? Do you want us to take you seriously? Don't call yourself sweeps. Don't yeah. call yourself sweeps, and don't reference either Hamilton or John Bolton. Right? <laughs> like not in your legal is, filing. This is, don't be. Ch- yeah. The first three sentences. <laughs> like you are alleging that Elon Musk ordered you to violate California building codes in a way <laughs> that put human lives at risk. You don't need to be twee. Like we don't need to make this you like sh- like I I'm, I'm just I'm very frustrated. Um, you don't need so, to put on a pantsuit and sing hallelujah while you yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're over the fucking Twitter old guard. Yeah, very funny. I I expected uh. to be more immediately on board with the people suing Elon Musk because I hate him so much, but they have done yeah. the hard work of making me right in the middle so far. I am they're, yeah, yeah. They're, <laughs> I am steering down the median on a fucking crotch rocket at the at the moment. So <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, in ways that potentially put tweep lives at risk. In building the Twitter hotel rooms yeah. Musk wanted for tweeps, he would be pushing to work through the night. Plaintiff Hawkins was forced to resign after Musk and his transition team fundamentally changed the nature of her job and threatened her professional reputation by directing Twitter to breach its leases and essentially steal space from its landlords. Elon doesn't play rent. Uh, but- they're still doing a little like I know. stealing space from landlords. I don't know. It's I, I, Again, I'm, I'm very frustrated. Again, it's not fully for yet. Because like the thing that Elon that comes next is uh, like he one of Elon's transition team members told Hawkins, Elon doesn't pay rent. Uh, and Elon told me he would only pay, pay rent over his dead body. And I'm frustrated at the degree of like. Again, especially since he spent so much time like flipping out over crime in San Francisco. He's like this big law and order fascist weirdo now. The mm-hmm. fact that he just refuses to pay rent, like, fuck him. Like, that makes me extra angry for Elon Musk. Um, but also, like, I don't know, the the it, it is hard to make someone get too outraged about stealing from like a giant corporate landlord. Yeah, there's a lot of tension like, here. <laughs> If you want if you want me to be like, well, maybe there's one cool corporate landlord, I don't know, send in like mercenaries to force 
Twitter out of their offices, right? There's an idea. Like, mm. Impound their servers, you know, like be a real asshole about it. And then at least you'll be a cool, like corporate ghoul, you know, G- go for it, guys. Do do what think about think about what that guy, the bad guy in RoboCop would do in this situation. Mm. You know, there are ways he, he would send he would send Boddicker in to like fucking beat the shit out of Elon Musk when he's having a cocaine party. You know, that that's what he you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. If Ed 209 destroyed Twitter's offices, I'd be like, all right, well, I'd be like, what? Well, OK, <laughs> what OK, all right. one landlord gets to stay a landlord. <laughs> 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 uh, so both Killian and Hawkins were told that from Musk, the fact that Twitter was legally or contractually obligated to pay a particular sum would be irrelevant to the decision of whether to actually pay it when that amount came due, that Musk operated on a zero-cost basis, and that Twitter would therefore simply decide afresh for each significant expense whether or not it wanted to pay what it owed. This seems very illegal. Um, But he's got enough money that it's not, right? Like, because he can just hold it up in court for forever. And yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's very frustrating. There's a lot of people on the streets in San Francisco because they couldn't pay, you know, what they owed in rent or whatever. And mm-hmm. Elon's mm-hmm. just going to continue uh, advocating and- they'd be put in death camps, I guess. That's cool. Exactly. It is, it is yeah. interesting how differently we treat yeah. these two very different uh, yeah, as, examples especially- of rent evasion (laughs) like i would be surprised if the total number of people evicted in san francisco last year like the amount that they owed that got them evicted equaled what musk has failed to pay on his properties 100 percent. yeah it's it's just thinking about yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Anyway, okay, that's back cool. on board with so, the tweets. Um, <laughs> yeah, go. back on with the tweets. The tweets say that Musk uh, flatly refused to pay them their contractually required severance. Um, this was severance that Twitter and Musk had in order to induce tweets to stay through the close of the merger, promised would be paid if Musk conducted a layoff, in which Twitter and X Holdings had bound themselves to pay under the terms of the merger agreement. Seems clear that they er- owed this money. Uh, and basically, the allegation is that Musk never even intended to pay people, right? Like, he was just lying yeah. to get people to work without pay which is like i don't know that's in like the the neighborhood that's like that's 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 illegal like you're not allowed to make people work without yeah, paying them no i yeah. would say it's not just in the neighborhood it's staunchly like yeah that seems like crimey I, that's like the town even square if even if it's not crimey um it's unethical and immoral and he's a bad person <laughs> i'll just i'll uh, yeah. throw that out there yeah but how could it not be crimey <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Musk went so far as to insist publicly that tweets he fired are not entitled to any severance at all beyond Warn Act notice. In hindsight, it appears that he also inserted a legally ineffective specific no third party beneficiaries clause in the merger agreements provisions relating to severance in a failed attempt to prevent tweets from enforcing those provisions. Plaintiffs bring this action for a declaratory judgment against the merger agreement and the related but independent promises and representations to the tweets. Entitle them to the promised severance to recover that severance as well as punitive damages for defense and flagrant bad faith, yada, yada, yada. They quote a bunch of laws that that Musk probably did, in fact, break. Um, yeah, so uh, we go in, we, we we detail the case of, like, a couple of these, these people. They're just kind of, like, listing their work histories, which I don't feel like we need to know for any particularly worked at, uh, worked entertaining at Twitter. reading. Yeah, worked at Twitter, spent a lot of time as a, as a tweeper, tweeping up, you know, Ugh. pretty hard. Um, defendant Musk is on information and belief, a citizen of the state of Texas residing in Boca Chica, Texas. I wonder how much time he spends in Boca Chica, but people have been allowed Mm. to fake being from Texas for forever. Um, we had a whole president do it once. Um, look, 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 it, look it up, people. Yeah. All right, so now we're up to the factual background statement here. This litigation arises out of Twitter's att- ah, ah, sorry, my uh, my mouse. This litigation arises out of Twitter's attempt to avoid paying its ex employees the severance it promised them. Twitter made these promises many times and in many ways. Twitter made these promises in their initial offer letters to the plaintiffs. Twitter made the same promise explicit in its agreement to sell the company to Musk, negotiating for a clause in the agreement that protected its employees by ensuring they would rece- receive severance at least as favorable during the post-merger period as they had under the old management. And Twitter made, at, went out of its way to make additional promises and representations to its employees to allay their concerns in advance of its purchase by Musk and to convince them to stay employed at Twitter pending the close of this transaction. Twitter broke all these promises, breaching its enforceable agreements with its former employees in the process. Now, I'm going to say this right now. I suspect the people who sold Twitter to Musk, the former 
people running it, the former board, were well aware that all these employees were going to get fucked and simply didn't care because they yeah. got their bag, right? Yeah, that's why yeah. the deal was made because yeah, he I don't offered have... them <laughs> so much money. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't have uh, any sympathy or, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, care for the people that yeah. sold Twitter <laughs> in general. No, no. I mean, I, I, yeah, it seems like they ought to be liable to some extent, too. Uh-huh. Like, there's some sh- sort of due diligence they should... I'm sure they did enough legally. I don't think they're actually... They actually have any exposure there. Um, I just think it's immoral. Um, yeah, so it just kind of goes through the the details of the merger, the details of, like, how they uh, set up this severance agreement. Um, so... T- Twitter committed to providing employees with two months base salary or incentive based salary for sales employees, prorated performance bonuses through as through all tw- as though all tw- triggers for such bonuses has been hit. The cash value of any RSUs those are like internal stock units that would have vested within three months of separation. Uh, cash contribution through the continuance of of healthcare coverage. So it's like a pretty good severance agreement. I think it's better than we got it cracked. Um, yeah, you know sounds that, 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 right, that sounds right. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds what they, I yeah, can't that speak to that because accurate. they never hired me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, full time. Well, they uh, yeah, I, I corporate America, uh, something none of us have any issues with. I don't know all these <laughs> tweets. Yeah, these tweets seem like they were promised a pretty sweet deal if they stayed on to like ensure the company didn't fall apart right before the deal, and then Musk immediately yeah, supposed to fall apart out at us like as he months yeah. later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, so they list some of the different things that, like, uh, you know, Musk said during the process of like that whole back and forth of or whether or not he was going to acquire it. The lawsuit against Twitter. Um, okay, here we get to a point where we have that's titled "Twitter's employees are worried about the pending Musk takeover, and Twitter makes representations to address their concerns." So this should be some inside gossip. With the promise of Twitter being acquired by one of its fiercest critics, many tweeps were understandably very concerned about their future, particularly the partic- mm-hmm. uh, p- about the potential effects of the merger on their jobs. Layoffs had already been discussed as a possibility even prior to the acquisition, and it was widely reported that cuts would be needed as a consequence of the additional debt that Twitter was incurring as part of the acquisition. Given his criticisms, it was also viewed that Musk would make additional material changes at Twitter. Twitter took these concerns very seriously. If a significant number of tweets were worried enough about their future to seek new employment, it would harm Twitter's ability to continue to function smoothly while the deal was in process. Twitter, therefore, took several steps to reassure its employees. Uh, They negotiated this merger agreement um da 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 da, da. um let me get down here to the the next set of good stuff um <clears throat> Twitter also benefited from a degree of stability dur- uh, via employee retention during the pen- pendency of the acquisition and the related litigation. That reduced the chances of an acquisition threatening material adverse event, protecting the chances the deal would be consummated. And Musk, in extending an offer to entice employees to stay pending his acquisition, also received stability. The promise of a company that would be, when he completed his takeover, largely in the condition it was made before the offer, allowing him to begin to reshape Twitter from a stable foundation. Nevertheless, tweets remain concerned about the consequences of the acquisition. Twitter issued an acquisition FAQ to provide employees with a resource. The FAQ detailed reassurances and representations to employees regarding their compensation, how equity grants would be handled. It explicitly stated that in the event of a layoff, any employee whose job would be imp- is impacted would be eligible for a severance. Um, they had meetings and stuff about this. Uh, Twitter orally communicated to its employees that Musk had made the severance stability promise in the merger agreement. Yeah, uh, yeah. at one point a tweet posted to Twitter's internal Slack tagging Twitter's C-suite leadership and communicating that the details of Twitter's severance would be critical to employees' decisions to uh, remain pending the close of the merger. So yeah, they're really building a case here that like the entire, the both the value to the people who owned Twitter and ran it previously and the value mm-hmm. to Musk was reliant upon folks staying in keeping the site stable and that they had to do that to do that. Both of them basically had to run a con on the workforce of Twitter. Um, and I think it's been more of a con on Musk than it has been on. I like it. Like he, he's, it, it has kind of fallen apart for him as well. Cause the news just came out today that mm-hmm. the company's valued at about a third of what it was when he <laughs> bought it. But yeah. I laughed like, out loud. Both of them definitely like, had to screw over all of these people in order to, in order to like carry out their plans. Yes. Like it seems pretty <clears throat> clear what was going on all around here. Yeah. They um, just wanted everyone to shut up so they could make the deal happen. Yeah. 
Uh, almost immediately upon a Musk's arrival at Twitter, he instead purported to terminate executives for cause. On information and belief, this occurred in some cases within hours of the takeover. In fact, on information and belief, Musk did not even intend to have Twitter pay th- the director's office and officers indemnification and insurance premiums as required by Section 6.6 of the merger agreement. Uh, on information and belief, a Twitter employee with access to Twitter's accounts and capacity to execute the payment made that payment despite Musk's specific objections, preventing a brief uh, a breach of the merger agreement uh and this employee was fired for doing so so basically musk was required to pay like indemnification and insurance premiums as part of the merger mm-hmm. agreement which is like that's something he's required to do under state law to keep the company like functioning legally and he directed an employee to like cancel the payment because he's saying basically don't pay money for anything and so this person follows the law and makes the payment and musk fires them <laughs> That's wow. Very funny. So um, absurd. Yeah. Good leadership. Oh, yeah, no, no. That's it is not good what leadership. I really mean. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, on, I mean, it's like, that. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Oh, just that broken brain thing of just like, you're so rich and powerful and you have this idea of yourself and your view that you're like, just don't do it. Just don't do anything. Right. Just like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like the idea of like buying this uh company and just like we're not gonna spend any money <laughs> and if we do you're fired it's like the I- the idea that that would work out for him um well is, it's uh, just when you're silly. that rich and powerful you get away with lots of stuff look at him not paying rent i mean yeah and you think you can and i mean maybe he can and nothing will come of this it's like <laughs> just, are you really uh, yeah it's interesting yeah. also seeing all this stuff uh because first we saw it as one might call it secondhand news. Yeah, um, perfect. Back Excellent. In the day <laughs> when uh, you get like these little little tidbits, these little snippets of like, yeah, this person said that he did this, and just seeing it all laid out in this legal uh, complaint is interesting. It is interesting, and I, I think so. A lot of this is kind of going over the stuff that was reported one way or the other, like as it was happening. So if you don't remember back on November 3rd, 2022, after the acquisition, he sent out an email basically saying, hey, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow and you'll know who's getting shit canned. Um, The next day, November 4th, they fired half of the company. Um, It seems like the layoffs were largely organized by SpaceX and Tesla employees who sort of like came in and helped him build lists. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, he brought in, that's what's alleged here at least, um, uh, on information and belief, Musk used engineers from his other companies, Tesla and SpaceX, to help determine which tweets would be included in the November 4th layoff. Um, and like then, putting, sorry, putting engineers in charge of that is yeah, so, it's, so weird. Especially <laughs> since so much of the jobs aren't engineering. Like, for example, being the people who pay to keep mandated insurance Yeah, active. no, it's just like this like weird, like, billionaire yeah. engineer brain. Can like, you imagine, oh, at- like, people in HR or people that are trained for these kinds of conversation is one thing, yeah. but <laughs> engineers. Yeah, people also like the people are, who like, are worst at, I don't know, managing like, Do you think that um, they just got people in the room and played go your own way? Yeah, mm. you should go your own Sorry. way. Ah, man, oh, what a bad. No, you nailed it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it all happened. Yeah. Folks. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, at this point, Twitter's been been gutted, you know, much like a big game hunter who gets impaled by a tusk. There we go. I was going to say much like Stevie Nicks in that breakup, but I like yours better. Okay, that's that all that works too. Um, So the next thing that happens is they start firing people after this like first wave of layoffs. Um, You know, those are they're agreeing to pay severance, and they're going to fuck with a lot of those people on severance. But in order to avoid paying severance, the next thing that that Twitter does is they start over the next few days firing even more people, saying they were in violation of Twitter policy. Um, these are for cause terminations. So like they don't have to do the same things they have to do in like layoffs, RE severance. Um, so it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fuckery. It's also like bad for people's careers. It's one thing if like, yeah, that company, the, the, it, the, the boss gutted it and everybody got laid off, but they didn't necessarily do anything wrong. That doesn't necessarily hurt your chances of getting hired mm-hmm. again, as opposed to like getting fired for violating right. company policy, which can, which is or actually for yeah. making a payment. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, or for paying a, a mandated like insurance. Following the law. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know who does follow the law? Products it could have possibly products and services. I think it has to be. It's got yeah, to be. It is. It be. is. We, most do. Most do. They are all, all, nearly all of them do. I mean, we are we are sponsored by the Sinaloa cartel, um, who have a little bit of a history Ooh. of rule, rule breaking. But for the most part, oh. all of our sponsors are law abiding. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't rule breaking, like a rule bending, bad boy? Yeah. 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 Or girl. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, we're back. Uh, we're back and we're going to continue because as our fans always say, d- don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Always saying that. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Mm, they voted yeah. on yeah. Uh, in a landslide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really the episode of some of our fans' dreams. <laughs> oh, oh boy we should that's we can't break this, this, this chain. Gone too Let's far keep going. yeah no yeah there we go ouch so um oh no i accidentally started playing rumors on my phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean a lot of the allegations against musk are based on well you know, the the, mm. the, the mm. phrase they use is uh, based on information and belief. But what is that if not rumors? If not rumors. Uh, yeah. I'm okay. sorry, this, I this just too took much. a sip of Red Bull and it like burned <laughs> yeah. I snorted mm. it. Oh, yes, we're having fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> so the next thing that Musk announces is that Twitter's ending its remote work policy and all workers have to immediately report to a physical Twitter office. This was a real problem for people who lived like hundreds of miles from Twitter offices and mm. could not do this. Um, Musk updated the policy after this was pointed out to him and said that Twitter would allow for a transition period for remote workers who live too far away to move to a location closer to Twitter. That's a good decision to like uproot your entire life and move across country for a job that appears to be collapsing every every yeah. minute. Um, it doesn't I would do yeah. need you there Yeah, and probably won't exist in like six yeah. months. That seems like a good call. Uh, later, the policy morphed into one in which managers could allow their reports to work remotely if they chose to, but would themselves be fired if the employees they allowed to work from home did not perform up to Musk's undefined and unarticulated standards. Mm. What a great working environment. Well, he's As not a, a very articulate uh, person. No, so I don't no, know. He's, yeah. he's dumb and kind of an asshole. Yeah. Um, so think uh, that, uh, the owner of a, uh, uh social media communication platform is so bad at communicating <laughs> well he's not he's he bought it you know like he purchased yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh it's it's pretty cool so in mid-november musk sent another email with a link to an online form and an ultimatum any twitter employee who wanted to keep their job at twitter would need to affirmatively indicate their consent by checking a box on an online form to a more hardcore working environment which would mean long hours at high intensity and in a transparent attempt to avoid the severance obligation to which he had bound himself musk unilaterally decreed that employees who did not affirmatively check the box would be deemed to have voluntarily resigned and exchange for two months of non-working leave and a single month's post-separation pay that's cool what a yeah how you run a company is how you uh show your employees that Mm -hmm. you're gonna do a good job well it's really important doesn't he want people to like have kids and raise a family but like he also wants them to like spend like 12 hours a day sleeping at the office yeah Yeah, i'm not sure that well, does he want everybody to have kids and raise a family? Oh, also, he well, he certain also types of people to have mm-hmm. kids and raise. He also lots cut of kids. paternity and maternity leave for his employees yeah. as well. But he doesn't want his the employees doing that. Other full people full of contradictions. Exactly. That mm-hmm. one is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, v- vaguely other people should be doing mm. that. Uh, so as part of this wave of layoffs, a substantial number of employees uh, were laid off because they did not immediately affirmatively agree to the material changes to their working conditions that Musk had demanded. And yet that still wasn't enough. After the November 17th layoff, Musk again turned to engineers from his other companies to conduct code reviews of code writ code written by Twitter employees. The code reviews were a clear pretext to attempt 
additional four cause firings. The reviewers lacked the context to meaningfully evaluate the code, and the reviews were completed in an amount of time that was clearly insufficient for any good faith approach of the task. After the code reviews, Twitter fired multiple employees on the pretext that their work was not up to standard. Many of those employees had received uniformly positive performance reviews fi- prior to being fired. Other employees were put on performance improvement plans in a transparent attempt to lay the groundwork for future four cause firings. The slapdash, bad faith nature of these reviews was open and obvious. Some managers acknowledged that they were instructed to stack rank their employees so that at least some of the employees in each group would be fired or placed on performance improvement plans, even if all were performing adequately. Other managers specifically informed employees that the managers had placed on PIPs that the employees could keep doing what they were doing because their performance did not require improvement. Other managers could not identify the standard by which they had assessed particular performance as requiring improvement. And at least some fired employees were informed that they had been fired by by mistake and asked to return to work. All told, on information and belief, Twitter laid off, fired, or engineered the resignations of over 5,000 employees at le- within less than two months. Ooh. That's uh, beautiful yeah. stuff. Real, mm-hmm. uh, real impressive leadership right there. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, <laughs> I was going to just say firing, all of this stuff is very time consuming. All of the work uh, that's being put into fucking over the employees and firing them and then, oh, whoops, these are the ones that arguably too much attention when there's vital things that need to be done at the company. Anyway, sorry, Cody, what were you going to say? Oh, no, that's true. It's just, um, I there's... He did that interview, an interview recently where they talked about this and basically he's like, yeah, uh, we're going to try to hire a bunch of people back and maybe people we fired will want to come back like very recently. Like this is the plan. And it's just so because he didn't even like I saw some uh, some Twitter blue subscribers be like, oh, I love uh, I love this because like, you know, being able to own your mistakes. No, no, no. He didn't say it was a mistake. He said that he had to do it. This is all this is all in the pretext that like. I have to get rid of this many people. I have yeah. to. And yeah, now that I, he did, he's like, well, we'll hire them back. That's still not admitting the mistake. He's still saying he had to do it. He's just saying yeah. he's going to do this new thing now. And it's very funny that he thinks these people are going to return to work because I guarantee you they are never going back again. Oh, my God. No, why, why would you? Uh, uh, Katie I got Oh, my gosh. Come <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> oh, man. I was just agreeing that with you. That was so good. That was so good. Love it. Mm, nom, 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 nom. Good mm, stuff. Yeah, you make good loving stuff. fun, Robert. <laughs> That's something no one has ever said to Elon Musk. God, no. <laughs> no, they, no, they have not. Oh, fuck. So, let's go to the story of one of the people who's a uh, a party to this lawsuit, Plaintiff Hawkins. Hawkins was Twitter's vice president of real estate and workplace, responsible for its office leases and managing its offices. So you can tell this person's not going to be long for the company, because Elon's no longer dealing with any of that. <laughs> um yeah, uh, da, 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 talks about her whole career, which I don't really care about. Um, but yeah, so she's not opposed. It says that she was not opposed to the merger or the concept of Musk as Twitter's new CEO. She received word of the impending merger deal while on family vacation. Didn't know a lot about Musk at the time. I don't think that's possible, but OK. Uh, probably, uh, it just seems weird that you wouldn't know a lot about Elon Musk and live in the Bay in the tech yeah. industry. But yeah, maybe. Probably. Um, well, I guess there's like... like- you can not know about him, but you can yeah. know. Like, yeah, he's te- the Tesla guy. Yeah, he's the Tesla this. guy. That's not. probably what she means. Um, given the uncertainty, her focus in the period leading up to the merger and the leadership she provided her team centered around one basic principle. Let's focus on doing our jobs and protecting our people. During the pendency of the merger, employee retention was a critical concern, as we've talked about, yada, yada, yada. Um, Musk, okay, at the closing of the, as the closing of the merger approached, Musk's behavior heightened Hawkins's concerns. He showed up to an all-hands meeting exactly once, arriving late and spending his time talking about extraterrestrials. God. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is that that's the, so uh, funny. Is that oh, the, boy. I bet that's the one where he also talked about gizmos and how he likes gizmos. That may be. I think that may come a little bit later. Uh-huh. Uh, but it, well, it's very wait. clear. He, he was talking about aliens this whole time. And all of these tweets were just saying, I don't want to know. It's so right. It's so, he's such a, the work. 
Uh, it's just like one of those that he thinks he's so interesting and like, oh, I, everyone's so boring. I have the great conversations, but he's only got these stock things. He has like mm-hmm. a thing he says about aliens and a yeah. thing he says about s- simulations. And that's it. Like, that's his idea of like, yeah, yeah it's very I'm, much like a push button, get bacon attitude to comedy. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, yeah. but like he thinks it's like this, like deep, like interesting conversation that goes beyond his one, like talking point about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, yep. Maybe Good stuff. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's yeah. fascinated. So he's he he shows up once. He bullshits about aliens. Even after that meeting, Hawkins kept an open mind, hoping that Musk's odd behavior would not impact his leadership once he took over Twitter and the employees were part of his team. But Hawkins also formed a strong d- determination to remain at Twitter, at least throughout any transition period, in order to shepherd her team through the transition. The reality of Musk's new directives and operation of Twitter almost immediately shattered that determination. Upon Musk's arrival at Twitter, he brought with him a transition team of executives and sycophants from his other companies, uh, from whom Musk directed directed Twitter's employees to take direction. This is the uh, the transition team. He also brought over Tesla engineers to, upon information and belief, make retention and termination decisions. The transition team decreed that no managers were allowed to communicate with their teams via Slack. <laughs> Which what? just, like, just nukes the business, right? Like, this is the only way we communicate for most things. And you're like, nobody gets to do this. Uh, they froze all payments to vendors until they could be verified. No explanations were ever given as to like what this meant or why it was being done. Um, yeah, it, it basically Twitter was just breaching contracts and mass without like informing the vendors or the employees communicating with this, these vendors as to why. Um, Faced with tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in outstanding invoices with no reasonable expectation of timely payment, many of these vendors informed Twitter that they would not be performing further work for Twitter until those invoices were paid. Which is, by the way, part of why DeSantis' announcement was a failure, is that Twitter hadn't paid a major (laughs) vendor that was responsible for, like, keeping Twitter spaces Mm -hmm. up and online. Yeah, specific Um, spaces, yeah. Yeah, very funny. Um, But you know who does pay all their vendors? Because their vendors are me. Right. They pay you our, over and over. Our ads, yeah, yeah. That's oh. that's who I get paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So help me get paid. <laughs> oh, Terrible. Yeah. Did you get paid, Robert? Did you get <laughs> no. paid? Uh yeah, we're back, and I'm I'm counting up my money. Uh, I'm counting up my money, which is why everyone calls me the Gold Dust Woman. Mm. I don't know. That one was um. going to be hard to fit in. That like, was going to be hard to fit yeah, in. I was, was wondering how it was going to yeah. That's good. That was really that's, good. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the yeah, other one I think one, you're last praising me a little too much. But it yeah, was thank you. It attempt. is your show, Robert. Yeah. You did You did both miss one that I did a little bit ago. What did uh, you do? Yeah. Um, I, I was I was pretty, pretty proud about this. Um, but yeah, I've, I've also forgotten which one I did. But you <laughs> missed one. Right, you Listeners, know. you can go search for it. It was it was yeah, like s- it. 7 minutes ago, you know. Nobody nobody commented on it. Pull up the pull up yeah. the 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 set list for rumors and figure out which one I did. That's a yeah, little no more. You you'll get a prize. You'll get a prize. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. And like Elon Musk, I will probably not follow through with this promise. Um, but, you know, Would you whatever. say it's a little lie. Was it not that funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm telling you, sweet little lies. Oh man, good stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Twitter fired these vendors when they were like, you know, had had issue with not getting paid. Um, Musk attempted to halt the payment of his employees' contractually man- mandated November RSU vests. Like these people were guaranteed by their contracts a certain like number of vested like internal stock units that he's just saying, attempting to not pay people. Um, God, what a piece of shit. Robert Caden was fired shortly after the November vest payments went through. On information belief, Caden was fired because of his actions in making the November RSU payment in compliance with Twitter's obligations over Musk's objections. Delana Brand, Twitter's chief people officer and Hawkins' direct manager, handed in her notice within days after the merger closed because she was disgusted at how people were being treated. On or about October 30th, 2022, Hawkins attended a meeting with Steve Davis, Jared Burchall, and many of Twitter's global leaders. In that meeting, Davis and 
announced several changes that boded ill for Hawkins' team in her role at Twitter. First, he announced that Twitter's sourcing and procurement team should handle all lease negotiations from that point forward, despite lacking both personnel and experience sufficient to handle this task. Next, he announced that the company would no longer be working with brokers to procure and negotiate leases. This choice ran in conflict with every established standard and practice of commercial real estate management. Um, And obviously, this is like a massive burden on the in-house staff, which has just been like cut viciously. The only justification given for changes was Elon wants this. Uh, Very soon thereafter, Davis informed Hawkins that Twitter needed to find $500 million in annual savings. (laughs) So to do this... Yeah, just a half billion. (laughs) Yeah. Sophie, by the way, I'd like us to find half a billion dollars in savings this year for the company. Can we um, can we get the team on that? You know, maybe. uh, Yeah. Get the engineers on that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to cut out coffee. Uh, Garrison's going to need to find like three or four hundred million dollars. And uh, yeah, together, I think that'll do it. My my hundred million dollars in coffee uh, and another three or four hundred million dollars. We can make it. Yeah, sure. I think. That might be too much coffee anyway. Yeah, I mean, you're probably right. It'll be good, be good for my heart. For you. <laughs> no, I should just switch to cocaine again. That's That was yeah. just like 20 or 30 million a year. I was going to say tea, maybe. Maybe switch to tea. Wow. Maybe. I, I don't know about cocaine, that. That's kind of okay, English. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Fleetwood Mac did too much tea, lips. but they no. sure went into cocaine. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. R- rumors wasn't made on Earl Grey, Cody. <laughs> that was made on China White. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, to accomplish this, each global lead was given a massive spreadsheet that had to be filled out every single day, identifying possible savings opportunities. Hawkins' spreadsheet covered 30 locations and upwards of 50 leashes. The pressure to fill in the spreadsheet on time was immense. Expectations from above made it clear that compliance was prioritized above accuracy. That's a good, you know, oh, you're making a good God. team <laughs> when people are like, you oh, don't actually God. need to do your job as long as you're on time. <laughs> that is wild that's so funny that's super funny it's that it's that that marvel thing where like like five months ago they were like we're gonna stop focusing on quantity and start focusing on quality it's like yeah you gotta yeah. Make, you what were do you guys doing job. before like, <laughs> how would you describe what you were doing prior to this make sure it's good first yeah oh, oh. god yeah it's 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 pretty Pretty good stuff. Um, For example, Twitter instructed Hawkins to identify leases for uh, cancellation. When she identified potential sites and leases that could be terminated for cost savings, Hawkins and her team took the time to document risk factors involved in downsizing or terminating these leases. Um, One of the big things is that, like, if you break a lease, you often have to pay a fee. Like, if you do that with your apartment, you might have to pay, like, an extra month of rent. If Mm -hmm. you do that for, like, a giant corporate lease for thousands of workers, it could be significantly more money. Um, One would imagine. Yeah. And it it notes when the time came to present their conclusions, this added context was not well received when informed of the risks of termination fees during a meeting on November 3rd, 2022, Steve Davis said, well, we just won't pay those. We just won't pay landlords. Davis also told Hawkins. We just won't pay rent. Those are direct quotes from Davis per Hawkins best recollection to the extent that they are not word for word accurate. They are extremely tight paraphrase, bada, bada, bada. Hawkins is shocked because part of her job, like, is reputation based like i i am the person managing leases for this company and we will make meet our obligations yeah we Um, pay on time we pay yeah yeah uh, pay in general we pay again it's one of those things that in order for elon to meet his cost saving goals this woman has to like destroy her future in the business knowing that she will immediately Mm -hmm. get shit canned as soon as possible um it's just like such a gross guy and way of looking at people and looking at business like it, it's he hard to be he looks through just, people he doesn't look yeah at them. no uh he is incapable of of like seeing or caring about human beings which yeah is they're all I sort mean. of tools uh yeah. or little pieces uh for yeah. his yeah lack yeah. of a Player, plan i guess players only love you when they're playing yeah that's, that's uh that, that's what everyone says mm-hmm. about elon musk <laughs> um <laughs> So I don't know that uh, one was shoehorned in. I see it's, it's works, okay. Works. Look, a lot of the, a lot of these are gonna be half assed guys. But, you know, like we're we're just not gonna make it all the, them all work very well. 
Uh, unwilling to be involved in, let alone responsible for such thefts, Hawkins resigned the next day. He is asking her to steal. Um, she did so despite her internal commitment to remain through the transition to protect her team because she had no other choice. Yeah, I, I get that. That that kind of scans. Like he is saying, I need you to commit a series of crimes for me, Elon Musk, a man incapable of loyalty. Um, so, yeah. Right, that's the other thing. Like there's no, like, it, there's just, even if you're like on his good side at one point, it's like, worth nothing. Yeah. It's worth nothing. And you're worth nothing to him. And as soon as you even like, yeah. not even like, uh, barely a challenge will turn him yeah. around well, and then also, you're gone. Who becomes the scapegoat for things actually in this situation, which it hits the fan, you know, they're more likely to get wrapped up in that. Elon Musk isn't clearly he can yeah. evade all of it. We've all seen succession. I think, right? We've seen it. Maybe Robert hasn't. No, nah, I yeah, it 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 happens. Yeah, I, I don't know. What, what, what like I I get why she did what she did. Um so uh Killian uh is the next person we talk about Joseph Killian. Uh he was Twitter's global head of construction and design. Uh he was immediately given Hawkins' duties uh after she quits. Um he worked directly with the transition team. Um, and was directed by Steve Davis and Liz Jenkins, who worked for The Boring Company, and Pablo Mendoza, a venture capitalist who invested with Musk. Um, yeah, so that's 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 cool. Is um, Boring oh even God. still a company? Oh, God. Like, yeah, I mean, it's a big scam, but they still are a company. They dug that stupid hole in Las Vegas. I went yeah, through that, that was thing. Like it was dumb ago. as fuck. <laughs> I feel like they're like um, not a company anymore. I mean, they have engaged in what are effectively a series of cons, like roping in local governments to agree to work with them and then actually like Yeah, and pulling it out and then, yeah, and then like canceling, the canceling other uh, yeah. more viable transportation plans. Yeah, just uh, to fuck with, like, public transportation. Um, so I, I just noted, like, this guy, Killian, gets given uh, Hawkins' job, and he's being managed by Steve Davis and Liz Jenkins, who work for The Boring Company. And then there's this bit, which is amazing. Killian was also directing these activities by Nicole Hollander. On information and belief, Hollander was not employed by any of Musk's companies. On information and belief, Hollander is Steve Davis's girlfriend and the mother of his child. What? <laughs> so what? Musk's, Musk's, like transition team are just like hiring their girlfriends to manage the people in committing real estate fraud it's so again it's that like it's, it's that sick of amazing thing where it's like yeah if you like say oh my god you, like, on information and belief hollander was living at twitter headquarters with davis and their infant child who was a month no. older what the what? fuck <laughs> yeah family values awesome <laughs> Despite Good not Lord. being employed by any of Musk's companies, Hollander nonetheless had full instructional authority over Killian and the rest of his team with regards to the transition. Almost immediately, Musk's zero-cost basis policy re reared its head. Killian was informed by the transition team that he would have to justify his spin to Musk personally, and that if Musk was not convinced that the expenses were necessary, he would simply default on his contractual obligations and let the expenses go unpaid. In early November, Davis sent a 3 a.m. email to 15 or 20 managers complaining about Twitter's rent obligations, which totaled $130 million annually. In this email, Davis specifically compared Twitter's writ obligations to SpaceX's, noting that Twitter had one-tenth as many employees as SpaceX, but paid five times as much rent annually. Of course, Twitter had significantly more employees when it first occur incurred its rent <laughs> obligations. Mm. Killian quickly became concerned that Musk intended to stop paying rent on Twitter's outstanding leases, breaching the contracts, and placing the company at risk of being evicted. Indeed, Musk's attorney, Alex Spiro, loudly opined that it was unreasonable for Twitter landlords Twitter's landlords to expect Twitter to pay rent since San Francisco was a shithole. Oh, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Is that the only thing you need to yep. not yep. have pay rent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this uh, this city with a fraction of the violent crime of, for example, many parts of Texas mm. uh, is, is yep. yeah, it's... I was just going to say, because if that's the case, I think we could apply it to a lot of places. Yeah, I... It, yeah. I... It, 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 I, I'm so I'm so frustrated by this man and all yeah. of the people around him. Um, He's a very hateable man. Yeah, he incredibly hateable old man uh, or piece of shit, whatever. Uh, Musk even went so far as to prevent Twitter from paying the janitorial staff for the work they had already provided after the janitors complained about being fired. In essence, it quickly became clear to Killian that Musk's intended method of operation was to obtain services from vendors without any intention of keeping the agreements or paying for services requested and received. In other words, it was robbing people, like stealing from them. Mm. Theft, mm -hmm. the thing that he's complained about happening on the streets 
of San Francisco. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's okay so, if you right. wear a suit and do it. Yeah, it's right. great if you wear a suit and do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Again, it's what kind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I, the the. I really yeah you're agreeing with like me because I know I'm not wrong. I I, I feel like I feel like I if we're going know. to have these really fucked up stand your ground laws, you know, where people can basically like commit murder if they feel like their car is going to get stolen or something, mm -hmm. I feel like you should have the right to do that if you're like a janitor working for Elon Musk. Like you should you should be allowed to draw on him. You yeah, know? I, I yeah I think that this is a self defense mm -hmm. situation. Musk's law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. I. I. Uh, whatever. I don't know. This is. This is so disheartening. Yeah. It's really. It's like really, really disgusting. Um, yeah. And it's just. Uh. I guess I've seen some of the uh veil get lifted and sort of like people's like rose colored glasses on about him. Uh. Yeah. Be taken off a bit, but it's just obvious the kind of person he is and like how he doesn't really care about a lot of the stuff he says he cares about. It's just. I don't know. It sucks. Hate it. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, he it's just cares about it's, it's, being. Yeah, he's 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 he he sees himself primarily as an entertainer because for some reason, like all of the worst people in America, his primary goal is to like be famous for making people like laugh or whatever. Like it's weird mm -hmm. because like stand up comedians are the most miserable people in the world. And also all of the worst, mo richest people desperately wish they were a stand up comedian. Like you saw it when fucking what's yeah. his name? Well, uh, yeah. Dave Chappelle brought him out that like, Oh, when if you Chappelle could only, yeah. Yeah, if you could only have an audience eating out of the palm of your hand, you would be happier than you've ever been in your life. Well, but like, it's the one thing you can't buy. And yeah. we've talked about that on various shows that we've been on or have, but you know, obviously this was not a cool kid. He was, he's not a well-liked person. No. The only cachet that he's ever had is, is his money. He's not yeah. even a smart, innovative person. Every idea he's had is someone else's idea that he's yeah. tanking. I mean, are any of his businesses doing well? Yeah, you see it a lot also with like the AI quote unquote boom, where it's mm. cl so clear some of this is just like, oh, you just wish you were a little more creative. Like, yeah, you th wish that's you why they it. hate writers. That's why you hate exactly hate you artists, hate artists, musicians. you hate writers, you hate uh, musicians, you hate creators because you don't, you can't do it well, or you're not praised enough for it or whatever, and so you have to have the machine do it see, poorly. What I, <laughs> like, I, I, I think what we actually need to solve most of our problems, a basic income that ensures that like people could just like paint or make music or do comedy uh, mm -hmm. and survive. And, and here's the key part. Then we use AI to give the people who are worst at it a fan base. So they feel like they're successful <laughs> and they don't become oh Steven God. Crowder. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We make yeah. Ben Shapiro feel like audience. he's got yes. fans. Yeah. They'll, they'll they never clap, meet them. They do the. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we it's can. Like those, we uh, <laughs> we yeah, don't that, have that, a that, daily yeah, wire. This person doesn't exist account where they yeah. make like, oh, this is a fake person. It is made with a, a bunch of people. Yeah. An audience of them following <laughs> him and clapping and clicking the like <laughs> button, mm -hmm. praising his bad pilot now uh, now i'm envisioning I like a black i know they're mirror. saying that a what and now i'm envisioning like a black mirror episode yeah. where some journalist is like confused at how there's so many ben shapiro fans of his <laughs> tv writing or like how elon musk is such a successful stand-up comedian and mm -hmm. he like he cracks the case and then like the fbi has to come destroy him because you have like you don't know what we're keeping <laughs> at bay here yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can like yeah, we no, have to let good. them think they're good let the algorithm this do is good <laughs> but i mean uh, this scenario look was it couple days ago the godfather of ai comes out saying yeah. oh this could be our lead to it's our the end of the world our annihilation now i'm like maybe this is our maybe saving it's grace exactly. yeah. okay? positive reframe yeah um uh, but you know what's even better than ai providing a fan base for all of the weirdo right-wing culture warriors who uh got into advocating genocide because nobody laughed at their jokes i don't is, want to know yeah 
Oh, well, it's you. Oh, it's both of you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, is this our time yeah. to plug stuff? Yeah, I thought it was a, a time to do one last one last Fleetwood Mac reference. Oh, oh, I mean, we could. We still can. Mm-hmm. I did. Well, um, this has been a total has been one of my dreams. No, that was bad. That was no, worst. that was no, that was good. That was good. I'm proud of you being here to today with you guys oh mm-hmm. we have a show called some more news that cody hosts on the youtube channel and a podcast mm. that cody's gonna tell you about now mm. it's called some more news yeah. and you can watch it on youtube.com slash the name of the show probably and uh, even more news is the name of the podcast version which is more of a different kind of show but it's the same people uh where podcasts are available yeah yeah uh so check them both out check it out google the names of our names and you'll find all the stuff that we do google google katie stole google google cody johnston or google them by their nicknames c money and k money which is Mm -hmm. exclusively how i refer to them in private it's true Mm -hmm. it's all the time I don't really yeah. respond because I always forget, yeah. but yeah, that's how I type it out when I'm saying it. I just call call you both Kamani, but they seem to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they know. This has been. Oh, great. I definitely that works. Kamani. <laughs> Kamani. Yeah. Uh, I just have one last thing to say to you both, and it's that you make love and fun. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, come uh, come back for the next part of this series when we'll be talking about. Another album? Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know which, which other album. Um, I don't know. How do, you, how do you guys feel about the Dire Straits? I only know I like one Dire song Straits, that I they wrote. I only know a couple songs. Limited. Yeah, I only know Money for Nothing. Limited references available. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll work this out. We just do rumors yeah. again. <laughs> we can just do rumors again. Yeah, there we go. The White Fine. Album? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The and, White Album. And you know, mm-hmm. it's not an album, but doesn't have ads. Our Cooler Zone Media Apple Premium subscription <laughs> channel oh, that dang. you can subscribe to now. Robert, say something. Yeah, um, I am <laughs> not <laughs> secondhand news, but you know what's firsthand news is if you get a subscription to Cooler Zone Media on Apple's whatever their thing, then you don't get ads, and then the news isn't secondhand. It's just coming straight to you, unfiltered. You know, uh, every time I accidentally say something offensive, uh, we we leave it in for you guys. You're the, welcome. The cancel, Shit, fuck, the cancel, piss. Robert. That's Ass. right. It's a lot of piss. Mm-hmm. A lot of piss a talk. A lot of piss. Yeah, that's that's my you new. Have to uh, cut piss out of a podcast. Uh, when we say it the way we do, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really not okay. Feel the bones. Yeah, uh, definitely not okay. Anyway, that's been an episode. <laughs> Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, visit our website, coolzonemedia.com, or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.